Here are my top three super duper easy dairy-free Thanksgiving side dishes. We will be making your typical green bean casserole, your sweet potato casserole, and stuffing. To make this super simple and less overwhelming, we'll start the prep work the day before. Before you go to bed, you'll want to cube about eight to nine slices of whole wheat bread and then leave them overnight so that they can dry out. And if you're not using canned lentils, you'll want to cook your lentils in either veggie broth or salt water so that they are also ready for your stuffing. You can cook your lentils over the stove or in the Instant Pot, whatever you choose and works for you. I like to set it and forget it, so that's why I use the Instant Pot. You can also chop two onions, one for the stuffing and one for the green bean casserole, so it's ready to go. And the last thing we'll prep for the stuffing is chopping some celery. This is two stalks of celery. You'll also want to cook your sweet potatoes the night before. I like to use the microwave just because it's easy, but you can also peel them and cube them and boil them so that they're ready to go. You'll want to chop the mushrooms for the green bean casserole so they're ready to go as well. All the prep work was done before, now let's start to put together our three simple sides. We'll first start with a vegan stuffing. Instead of sausage, we'll be using the lentils. You'll set your oven to 350. Then we'll add our onions and the celery to our pan with some water. The water is used in place of oil because we're not only doing dairy-free, we're also doing oil-free, especially in this stuffing. Let that cook on high until the onions become translucent. Once you see some browning, you'll just wanna add a little bit more water to deglaze the pan. Once the onions are cooked, I do three cups of water with three teaspoons of this better than bouillon vegetable base. While that is boiling, we'll add the spices, which is about three fourths teaspoon of ground sage, and then about a half of a teaspoon of fennel. That's just to get that sausagey flavor. We'll then add one tablespoon of flaxseed meal to thicken everything up just like an egg would do. Next, we'll add about two and a half cups of cooked lentils. This is about half of a bag, so it's what will make this super hearty. And it's time to put everything together. You'll add these dried cubed pieces of wheat bread to your pan. Again, this was about nine slices. Then you'll add your lentil mixture on top. It's nice and thick, it's not too watery. We don't want this to just turn into mush. Mmm, smells really good. We mix everything around. Now, I cooked my lentils in salt water, so they were pretty salty, which is great because otherwise it will make the flavor pretty bland if you don't have enough flavor in the lentils already. So just keep that in mind. Perfect, it is ready to place in the oven for 45 minutes. That lentil mixture is so good. It's just so good on its own. Can't wait for you to try it. After 20 minutes of cooking, you'll open this and mix it around so that no part gets soggy and it all kind of gets a little toasted. While the stuffing is cooking, let's make our sweet potato casserole. We'll start with the topping before we put everything else in the food processor. So you'll want about three fourths a cup of pecans. You can do a full cup of pecans, but I'm gonna mix it up a little bit today. I'm just gonna add a fourth a cup of walnuts. Then you'll add a fourth a cup of brown sugar and about a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then let's process. That's it. You just want it to be just a nice texture here that you'll crumble on top. We'll set this aside. Next, you'll peel your potatoes. If you want, you could even leave some of the, the skin on if you like it more rustic. We're gonna make it into just a soft cream, so I'm gonna take off the skin. Of course, you can do this before you cook them. I actually think it's faster this way for me. Plus, I can eat it and still get the benefits. Okay, one potato, we'll put it in the food processor. You could actually air fry these skins and put some cinnamon sugar on top, and they're really yummy. I still have one more potato, but this got filled up, so I'm just gonna puree a little bit. Perfect, now I have more room. Okay, we'll mix that again. Now let's add about a half a cup of plant milk. I'm using soy milk. And then you can choose brown sugar or even maple syrup if you would rather use maple syrup, but we'll add a fourth a cup of brown sugar or maple syrup. And then you'll want a teaspoon of cinnamon. I always like a lot of cinnamon, so feel free to go extra. And then about half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Last but not least, I love cloves. So any type, as much as you can handle, <laughs> I usually do about a half a teaspoon of cloves. Cloves have the most antioxidants out of all of the spices. Okay, now let's process that. There we go. Ooh, yum, yum, yum. This is so good. Mmm, mmm. I could just eat this all day. <laughs> okay, now let's just put it together. 
super simple. You don't need butter to make this taste amazing. And I think that's what I want to show you. This can still be so good without the dairy. I mean, it still has sugar in it. It's gonna taste great. And now that that's all evened out, it's time to put on the topping. Keep in mind that this is made for your typical non-vegan eaters, people who aren't used to eating as healthy. So yes, we're swapping out butter. It does still have a lot of sugar, so if you want to use less, you can. You can use two tablespoons of brown sugar or maple syrup instead of a fourth a cup. You can reduce the sugar in half pretty easy, and it still tastes yummy to me. This is just for the non-vegan eaters. And now we bake this at 350, which is what my oven was already set to. So 350 for 20 to 30 minutes, just until the top becomes golden brown. While I'm here, I'm also just gonna check my stuffing, see how it's doing, mix it up one more time. Now let's make our last and easiest dish, green bean casserole. I'll never forget when I was eight years old and the first time my mom made it, I thought it was Delicious. Now my tastes have refined, and if I eat that cream of mushroom soup, I'll get a stomach ache. So I still like the canned green beans. I think they're fine, but you can make them fresh, of course. This just saves a lot of time. Then we'll make some cream of mushroom soup together without the dairy. <laughs> we'll start by water sauteing the mushrooms and the onions that we already chopped. It's just one onion and a full box of mushrooms, that smaller box of mushrooms. Again, we use water instead of oil, so you just have to check it and make sure it's not burning. The mushrooms naturally have a lot of water, so you don't need to add that much water to this as you're sauteing. While the mushrooms and onions are cooking, I just opened four cans of green beans and rinsed and drained them out into the pan. Then I'll add three cups unsweetened plant milk. I'm using almond milk. I always buy sweetened soy milk and unsweetened almond milk so that I have both varieties on hand. We add in the flavor with the better than bouillon paste. So you want three teaspoons. If you don't have like a bouillon cube or a bouillon paste, you can do just veggie broth instead of the almond milk. It won't be as creamy, but it still works. And for spices, we'll add one teaspoon of dried thyme. I'm gonna scoop up some of the liquid to put the cornstarch in here and mix it up and put it back. This is one fourth a cup of cornstarch. Again, you can use arrowroot powder if you are allergic to corn for any reason. I'll just mix that in there. If you need to add more liquid, go ahead and do that. And we'll add it back to the pan. Just gonna thicken everything up. All right, we'll turn off the heat, let it cool down now that it's nice and thick. We'll add just a dash of salt and pepper to taste, and then we'll put everything together. Okay, don't judge me for this, but my kids love these very processed fried onions on top. They are still vegan. They're not necessarily good for you, but I use them sparingly. They make this dish delicious. I'm just gonna spread them on top and then we'll put it in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. And everything should be done around the same time. And since we're here, I'm gonna mix this up one more time. Again, I just hate soggy stuffing. All right, 10 more minutes, everything should be done. I popped all three dishes out of the oven now that everything is ready. Now to liven up the stuffing, I just chopped up some spinach and I'm gonna mix it in just so it doesn't look dead, you know? <laughs> totally optional. You can also add in some pomegranate seeds just for some color. There we go, now it looks festive. Okay, let's taste the stuffing first. I love the spices. Mm. I love the sage, I love the fennel. I also love that you don't even notice that most of this is actually lentils and not bread. This is great. Okay, now it's time to try the sweet potato casserole. Mmm, this is so good. It's dessert, let's be honest. It's pretty much dessert, it always is. It tastes so yummy. Mm. And now to try the green bean casserole. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Just like when I was eight years old, it's still just as good, and I would argue even better with that homemade cream of mushroom soup. It's like the memories, you know? Eating these foods just brings back so many good, happy memories with your family. Now I promise you, your Thanksgiving doesn't have to be overwhelming. This took less than two hours to put three side dishes together. It was super easy and they are super delicious.